Welcome, John. We are thrilled to have you on our campus today. Over the next 45 minutes, I'm going to talk about a whole number of economic trends, analyze these trends, look at some of the risks that are associated with these trends, take a look at labor, immigration, automation, the impact, trade, globalization, with more of a focus on China, and take a look at our capitalist system, which I'm a big fan of, but which may need some rebalancing. So the problem with uncertainty is this. Consumers spend less, investors hold on to cash, and they delay investments. So uncertainty really has become the enemy of prosperity. 10,000 baby boomers reach the age of 65 each day and retire. And the problem is when they retire, they take their skill set with them. But the biggest issue I find here is the U.S. schools have always attracted the world's best and brightest. We educate them, and then we send them home to compete against us. Germany, Italy, Japan, Russia, 40 other developed countries have declining populations. What does this mean? Trade is really not very well understood. I would meet with members of Congress and they would say, you know, I understand this piece of trade legislation is really good for my congressional district, but so few of my constituents understand Economics 101 or Trade 101, and I can't sell that reality. 3.6 billion middle-class consumers is what we have today. By 2030, that figure goes to 5.7 billion middle-class consumers, and where do you think they're going to live? And there's been so much misinformation about cheap labor. You know, if cheap labor was the only consideration for a U.S. company, Haiti would be a manufacturing powerhouse. I like to say globalization is like fire. It can keep you warm, cook your food, or burn your house down. What do you think of the U.S. manufacturing sector? I bet you nine out of 10 will tell me it's been hollowed out. We don't make anything anymore. You walk into Walmart and all the products are from China. Here's the reality. I think it was 1994, 1995, I was flying to Napa Valley to give a speech, and I sat next to two college students, and they were talking about the internet. And I said, you know, what the hell's the internet? With digital technologies, you've wiped out one industry after another. Hundreds of thousands of people lost their jobs. We actually generated more jobs in the long run in entirely new industries. So what are we looking at in the future? I have always believed that free market capitalism is the greatest economic system ever devised. But the key is to balance it, not to let it go too far to the right or too far to the left. You see, the middle class has eroded, and it's been eroding since the 1970s. If you don't shore up the middle class, in four years it's going to swing way left. If you're a U.S. company and you want access to 512 million European Union consumers, are you still going to invest in the U.K.? And the euro... It might be actually way undervalued for Germans that are highly productive and way overvalued for Greece, which is much, has a much lower productivity rate. GM sells more cars to China than GM sells to U.S. consumers. So U.S. trade policy needs to reflect this reality. When you reform an industry, you typically pull subsidies away. As a result, you typically get higher unemployment. In China, you very often get civil unrest. And what does the Chinese ruling party fear more than absolutely anything? Now, when it comes to trade, we all know China hasn't played by the rules. So the question comes down to how do you change Chinese behavior? Well, how well did we do with the trade war? Several years ago, President Trump tried to persuade China to liberalize their investment environment. If they acquiesced and they improved their investment environment, what would happen? More U.S. companies would invest in China. And is that what the administration wanted? What do we do? Well, we need to rebuild trust with our allies, then confront China, and that's very, very difficult to do because they've been...